Can you believe that this home was made in a factory? And did you know that 35% of all the new homes built in America are manufactured? And that means that Americans are buying over 1,000 manufactured homes every day. Well, today we're in South Texas at Schultz Homes, and we're going to show you how factory-built homes are made. Schultz Homes Manufacturing Director Dave Kurtz says this plant turns out five ready-to-deliver homes each day. Well, Dave, manufactured housing sure has come a long way. This does not look like the mobile homes of yesterday. Steve, that's very true. This plant builds a high-end, custom-designed product that utilizes the same materials that you'd find in site-built construction, with one exception. Our controlled environment allows us to utilize adhesives and fasteners that aren't commonly found in the site-built construction field today. Well, you know, I see a lot of different models being built here at one time. It looks like you have a lot of design flexibility. We have a wide array of floor plans for our customers to choose from. And in addition, we have a tremendous amount of options that the customer can select from to customize the home to their own lifestyle. Very similar to ordering a car, you can order different options. Absolutely true. Well, where does it all start? Well, like any home that begins with a good foundation, let me show you how our process begins. All right. First, the base flooring is put together using two by six boards. Insulation is laid down and so is the plumbing. Then the subflooring is hoisted over and the decking is put down. Linoleum is added. Then the floor is lowered onto a steel beam foundation. From there, workers install the plumbing fixtures, cabinets, and interior walls. Schultz Homes makes their own wood cabinets for a variety of reasons. Dave, why not buy cabinets from a cabinet supplier? Well, we feel it's important to offer our customers a selection of design and materials that we couldn't get commercially uh, from the normal supply of cabinetry. And we also feel that it's important to uh, control the quality of the cabinets through our internal manufacturing process. Well, I notice that these guys can produce quite a few cabinets here. It's very important for us to control every aspect of material delivery that we can. So 196 employees of this plant rely on having cabinets available on a timely basis all day long. If we had to wait on a cabinet truck to deliver a volume of cabinets and they were short one or two because another factory couldn't produce, our plant would suffer. So we control that material flow by building the cabinets ourselves. As the home moves down the line, it starts to take shape. Exterior walls are prefabricated, including drywall and wallpaper. Then they're hoisted onto the foundation and screwed into place. Once the walls are in place, the home is ready for its roof. Well, Dave, what are we looking at here? Well, this is one of those technological advances that I spoke to you about earlier, where being inside of this building allows us to use this adhesive, which is known as foam seal. It's a two-part urethane that attaches the drywall to the roof trusses and gives us continuous connection of that truss to the drywall without the use of any mechanical fasteners. Now, that's a pretty strong glue, right? It's very strong adhesive, and because of the amount of adhesive that we apply, it gives us the structural rigidity that we need in our ceilings to allow us to transport these units to the site. And because there are no mechanical fasteners, we don't have the worries of uh, nail pops or fastener pops that are normally associated with lumber shrinking and contracting over time. Once the ceiling's firmly attached to the roof, insulation is added. The roof is then hoisted by a giant crane into the home and attached. Decking, tar paper, and shingles are added to finish the job. The house must be constructed in two halves so that it will not be too wide to be transported over the road. Because it must travel along the highway, special care must be taken to ensure the structural integrity of the unit. Dave, I think there's a perception that factory-built homes don't do as well in storms or high wind conditions. Nothing could be further from the truth, Steve. The federal government regulations require that we design the structural elements of this home to meet whatever the weather conditions are in the region that it's going to be sited. You see an example of that right here. On a wind zone one house, these bands connect the wall to the floor and this building column to the roof that you see up above. Now these bands haven't been connected to the roof beam or the floor rim joist yet, but that will be done in the next step of this finishing operation. 
If this were a wind zone three home, for example, these bands would continue all the way from the floor, all the way up this column, all the way across the roof and down the other side. So depending upon the structural requirements set forth by the government, we comply with the designs of uh, structural tie-in that we provide. Now we're at the uh, center of the house, or what they call the marriage wall. How do you fasten these guys together? These units are drawn together in the field. They're bolted together through the rim joist of the house. This clip ties the two units together and to the foundation. Now, as these guys go down the road, they're exposed to a lot of bumps and jiggles and jogs. How do you keep it all together? Well, that's the reason for this diagonal banding that we put in here, and this is for transportation purposes. Uh, this uh, imparts structural integrity to this large opening that you see on this marriage wall and keeps the unit all together and intact so that it arrives at the site in exactly the same condition that it was manufactured here at the plant. Well, Dave, your factory built homes have drywall just like a custom home. Exactly right, Steve. This unit has already had all of the finishing compound put on the joints, and we're in the process right now of installing the texture on the wall and ceiling surfaces. And that's what you see this fellow doing right now. So he just sprays a drywall compound like on the wall? This fellow is knocking that texture down to replicate the appearance of stucco. This is a texture that is normally found in uh, high-end standard site built housing. Now I notice he's using a plastic uh, trowel here. Why not metal? The reason that we use the plastic knockdown knife is we can get on this textured surface a lot quicker than we can with a rigid steel knockdown knife that we'd have to wait quite a bit longer before we could knock the texture down and get the same uniform appearance. The steel being a much more rigid surface would flatten that material out too much for the look that we want to achieve. Looks great. Once the finished home leaves the factory, consumers can pick from a broad range of floor plans and sizes. Many homes have over 2,000 square feet of living space, from spacious island kitchens to large dining rooms that will seat the whole family. So if you're looking for a custom look, but not a custom price, manufactured housing may be right for you. Mm -hmm.